very closely knit. A couple of diamonds out there as well as a king. Man doesn't hit anything on that. The ace high is still good for Simon. Yeah, that is an excellent flop uh, for men because I imagine his plan involves continuation betting. And sure does. There they go. And I imagine Simon just cannot continue on this board. It's just the worst flop possible for him. You didn't flop a gut shot. You didn't flop a backward straight shot. One of the knees hit. It's not very fun. So men going to pick up 1.7 million new chips. The big pot. Yeah. Looks like he's been gambling for a long time. <laughs> I think that's because he has. <laughs> <laughs> nice tournament, Jesse. You uh, you went down there to Los Angeles and fired a couple bolts in this one. But overall, your assessment is that uh, pretty pretty well run uh, events with good structure and something you uh, you enjoy. You'll go back. Definitely. I, I love that event. I, I loved being uh, in Long Beach. I stayed with some friends in Long Beach and had a great time out there. Um, I just, I don't know. I, the casino, they just rebuilt the casino, or built the casino a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. It's a really great casino. It's one of the few casinos in the country that has the temperature correct. That, <laughs> it's hard you know, to do. It is hard. It's harder than it should be to do. Uh, well, I'm especially here in like Las Vegas. Layers. You hear a lot of people talking about it during the WSOP, oh. how it's, you know, 115 degrees outside and then 61 degrees inside. You know, you're either freezing or you're burning alive. So uh, that, that is a strong, maybe the strongest endorsement for any casino I've ever heard. <laughs> they, get the, they get the temperature correct. Yeah, that stuff really big. matters, man. It's big, man. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. They, they took very good care of us, and I, I just had a great time. I, I love the structure. I love the, I love the big blind ante. I love that they do the shot clocks mm -hmm. once you get to a certain number of players. Everything about it was just something that I would, all made me want to go back very badly. The only thing I didn't like was not winning the tournament. Yeah, I think that uh, you and 581 other people feel the same way. The three guys that are still in it. Probably not too angry with this outcome. In fact, everyone who made the final table walk with, with six figures, $115,000 went to Jared Grenier, who came in sixth. But $5,000 to buy into it, 584 entries in the prize pool. $200,000 added from the Gardens Casino, but coming up to almost $3 million in the prize pool, $2.944 million. Man, good-looking hand here on the button. Ace-Queen offsuit. Man, has had a lot of good hands today. Man, raises. Simon's got a hand here. He's okay. He's got a real decision. Hmm. It looks like he's gonna three bet. I think he's gonna three bet, and then Men's gonna end up shoving if Simon three bets because his hand is. Men may just call, but his hand is too good to ever fold. Obviously. There's the three bet. Nine hundred K more to go for men, who is the chip leader as we sit right now. And the thing about a hand like this What? Is whoa. whoa. Keep holding. Face up. Whoa. Wow. That's a, that is not that is not game theory approved. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Oh, uh, interesting. So men showing respect to Simon there. Points to Jake and says if he raises, I call. It's funny too because Simon has had uh, quite a few like raises today. So I laid out H King, H Queen like a little book girl. Simon holds. Jake's like what? Jake's blown away. Jake's like, man, I'm not even getting dealt ace queen. <laughs> These guys are folding it. But next best option, how about king queen? King queen's pretty good. Not bad. We play, we know what. We have no hand. We got a hand to play. And Jake making the shove, all in. 
Yeah, I don't mind this. Jake doesn't really want to raise and have to fold to a shove. And if he limps, it's fine. Um, but if he limps and the shove, it's also awkward. It's certainly a hand that can shove itself. So he decides to go with that option. Also, he probably, after seeing that hand, he thinks that men's going to be folding way too often. Mm -hmm. Maybe some ace highs and stuff. So that makes the shove really, really good. So that, that might be an adjustment to what he's seen in the last few minutes. Or the last few hours, who knows. They want to fight. We had the roots. No fighting. Cards are out. It's really easy to commentate final tables that Jake's at because whenever he makes a play, we can generally assume it's the correct play in that situation. Uh, Doesn't make a lot of mistakes. That's for not, sure. not a ton. Men makes a call with his 10-8 offsuit over to Simon, king nine of hearts, 200k to go. He's going to raise it. Wow, men snap re-raise again. So, so men is in the business of folk. He's queen to the three bet, but he is his re-raises are very weak. I don't think Simon's going to fold this hand either. This could get interesting. Oh, wow. Oh, he does. I show you. You show me, I show you. You show me, I got to give it to men that uh, this limp re race looks even stronger. Just showing you folded ace queen there. Yeah. Maybe he's going to let it so high that he can't understand it. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. I did not catch this, but I'm certainly levels behind on a lot of these guys right now. Now, oh, man, it resumes the chip lead with that one. 9.7 million for Men the Master. 5 4 off. And a pretty rowdy rail is what it sounds like there in, in Los Angeles. Hey. Sounds like there may be some drinks flowing from this Thursday night, 10:30 p.m. Pacific time. End up checking. Wow, going for the raise here. Jake with his 10-9 offsuit, going to take it down right here with that raise. I wonder if that had something to do with a live tell sort of thing, because that's normally the type of hand that Jake would check back. Mm -hmm. He would, with this stack size, he might change it up a little bit, decide that this is one of the hands he'd rather raise, but I, I wonder if that had anything to do with the, the way that Simon was responding to his friends. And I, I've played a lot with Jake, and I have yet to figure out how much he puts into his live tells and how much it's just you know from a mathematical perspective but he plays a ton of live poker and i can't imagine he just completely ignores those sort of things and he might have picked up simon like you know he's he looked really comfortable he didn't he he put the call in so in rhythm he might think about raising if he had certain strong hands so a six a tray and a deuce on the flop that doesn't hit either of them both have jack high, but Jake has the best of it right now with that eight kicker. There's a seven. Another check from Jake. And has a gut shot. Yeah. He can bluff at this. Jack high is not going to win at showdown that often. <clears throat> I was a little surprised he didn't bet the flop, but then has done a lot of things that I have not planned for, so. And the ace rolls off on the river. Three like diamonds are out, but that's not a flush for anyone. Jake is going to have the best of it, and he's going to bet. 
Yeah, so of all the hands that Jake checked twice, Jack-8 is one of the worst ones. So it's a great hand for Jake to turn into a bluff. Additionally, he has a diamond. So he's blocking some flushes, which is, you know, it's not going to come up very often, but it's a little a little more helpful when you're picking out which hands you want to bluff with. So that, that hand makes a lot of sense to bluff with. It turns out he was bluffing with the best hand, but men could certainly have some queen highs, king highs there. Button moves to Jake. That means men will be in the small blind. As you see the payouts there on your screen, up top, $565,000. Runner up at three hundred and sixty-six. Next person out, walking with 270 large. Jake, 7-4, lets it go. Men with his ace-5 in the small blind. Just going to call. Simon with his queen-deuce in the big blind is just going to check, and then we'll go to a flop. There's a deuce in the window. Very nice little flop. Mm-hmm. Then got a nice piece of it, too, with the gut shot and overcard. There's a jack that rolls off. That doesn't change things. Simon's still very much in control. Men's going to lead out. I would prefer to see a check with the sand just because it wins enough at showdown. And uh, it can actually catch some of Simon's bluffs with just random air hands. Also, when you bet, you're mostly just getting called by hands, uh, which we're seeing in this case. And that's almost just the next best hand. Simon with the best hand wins the pot. Kickoff of season number 17 of the World Poker Tour in Los Angeles at the Gardens Casino. Only three players remain. The person that wins this will have the $15,000 entry taken care of into the season-ending WPT Tournament of Champions, which will close out the season. And again, this is the very start. Men looks down. Jack five of spades. 200K for him to go on the button. Nice little hand to raise on the button. Yeah, it looks like he'll do just that. Less exciting when both players in the blinds are extremely tough, but keep in mind that the while we have gotten shorter handed, the ante has stayed the same. So there is a big, big ante out there relative to what it would normally be three handed, and it means you want to go after more pots than you normally would three handed. Is that what Jake's actually considering here? Uh, I, I think Jake was considering possibly raising what he'd like a little little better of a bad hand. Yeah. Um, I think Jake's planning to call with almost all of his hands, and then, you know, he obviously wants to re-raise stuff like aces and kings, so he'd like to throw a few bluffs in. I think something like 8-4 offsuit he might have re-raised with, or 8-2 suited, but uh, when he has the 8-2 offsuit, it's just so bad, he might as well just fold that hand and move on with his life. And he does just that. We are on to the next hand. Simon looks down at Jack five of diamonds. Says no thanks. Jake, king nine. Don't make the call. Men with a Jack eight this time. Men check. To a flop we go, a couple of trays, and a queen. Jake with his king high, still best. I would have thought Jake would maybe check that particular hand, but this is a board that he's just going to take a stab at so often that maybe he's just going with 100% of the hands to get to the flop. It's always nice when you're ahead to protect your equity, but... You generally want it to follow into some sort of overall game plan. I think it did in that situation. Big first act close. Over to men in the small line. Mid folds. Simon's gonna get a walk. Let's go, baby. This little walk for Simon. Sounds like at least a few of the people on the rail are for Simon. That's what you're going to 
Oh man. <laughs> He's been John with the uh, with the rail for the better part of the evening. Sure that you picked up on that as well, Jesse. Yeah, that's been really I'm gonna go with interesting to watch. Uh, that's entertaining been, to me. I it's mean. been fun, man. Yeah. <laughs> Bring it on, buddy. I love generally, it. generally poker players, you know, they're they're very, very good at not letting people get under their skin. Yeah. Uh, so it's when when you do see somebody really pissing off a poker player, especially when it's somebody who's not even involved in the game. Right? Yeah. It's pretty funny. Queen nine for man. He's gonna raise it up, and Simon looking down at pocket ten is gonna make the call. Jake, king six of spades. Only three hundred more to go for Jake with 1.4 out there. would be surprised to, yeah, see him peel a couple off here. I'm a little surprised by Simon's call here. All three players to the flop. Huh. To the flop we go. And well, Jack, Jack six tray. Jake ten. hits a six. Jake, Simon's 10 still best. Great flop for Simon. Men doesn't get a lot of it. Let's see if it turn develops turn, here. Jack There's Jack another Jack on the turn. Wow. Simon, Simon is certainly going to get some value out of Jake here. The question is how much at this point. Uh, Jake was second pair and a king kicker. Simon was 600k into the pot, now up to 2.3. Jake. Jake's only decision is does he want to call here which is more standard or does he want to make a small raise to protect his hand versus a few draws and also get himself a cheaper showdown um, whereby he would he would raise the turn small and then check back the river but he goes with the more standard option just calls men's, men's out of it men's been checked out yeah Final card, and it's a four of clubs. That means that Simon's 10 is going to hold up. Let's see how much value he can peel out here. Yeah, this is going to be a really tough spot for Jake. He has not just a six, but one of the best sixes. He knows Simon can go reasonably thin, but he also knows that Simon doesn't have very much fours or threes or sixes himself. So... He's going to be a little worried because Simon certainly, when he calls out a small blind, has a lot of hands like Queen Jack, Jack 10, Queen Jack. Um, some stuff like pocket 9s or pocket 8s occasionally. He's not going to expect pocket 10. Simon but, goes a little less than half the pot, 1.4 million into a pot that was previously 2.9. Total pot size now 4.3. Will Jake find this fold? 1.4 is the bet. What's going through Jake's head right now is that uh, even though Simon's really good, almost nobody bluffs this run out enough. Yeah. And he needs him to bluff enough. To, yeah. Oh, that, was, that was a great play. I really think that uh, it's, it's really, really rare that you see somebody. Um, yeah, it's really easy to talk yourself into the call there, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's very easy to talk yourself into the call, and it's very rare that somebody actually shows up with a bluff, and you can't really beat any non bluff hands. Yeah. So that was a, a really good pull by Jake. We've seen a lot of those so far tonight. But big pot taken down by Simon. For sure. Simon's back to cruise along. Ten nine. Simon's going to bump it up. Men with nine, seven of hearts. Seems like the sort of hand he may want to take a flop with. Men's. Men calls. This hand's too good to call with to ever. Re -raise. When he when he re-raises with something like 10-8 offsuit, that makes some sense because the hands are great, so turning into a bluff is fine. But something like 9-7 suited, uh, just being suited makes it too good of a call. 
just has a lot of a lot more boards that it like bet six hundred thousand. Men hits nothing but bet six hundred and it works. He takes it down. A little surprised Simon didn't think about that more. Uh, because good lay down, good lay down, good lay down. Why don't you say the good lay down? <laughs> Men immediately lies. Good lay down. No one. Men is a hat with two M's on it. Do you think it's a men the master hat? I was actually wondering that because he's got a matching hat and a jacket, and I, I didn't really want to ask because I was afraid that maybe like a logo for a casino, I don't know. But I feel like he's branding himself. I th I'm pretty sure you're right. I'm pretty sure that's... Are you wondering where you can get one? Is that why you're asking? Oh, that is, I mean, that is, by next year, that will be the most popular for, for sure. available. I can't imagine it Jack of hearts, seven of spades, four of diamonds. Check, check. So Simon with his king high still having the best of this one. Trying to get ahead of the trend here on the men the master train. Do you think maybe you could buy the gently used, the, the worn jacket and hat that he final tabled in here? Hot commodity. Yeah, maybe yeah. on eBay they take they yeah. take uh take tournament chips for that on eBay, yeah, I'm I think. Sure, I'm sure. Check, check over to Jake, who's sensing maybe an opportunity, is going to bet it on the button. And it works. It feels like the players have pretty much broken even against each other since we sat down, doesn't it? Yeah, not, nothing huge one way or another. It's... You know, Simon slowly chipping up and becoming the chip leader again. Yeah. Yeah, Simon certainly had the best of it versus Jake. Men is, uh, his crazy plays have yielded him a lot of chips. Yep. I think he's up like three million on limp free races right now. Simon with ace four is going to make the call on the small blind. Jake. Nine, ten of hearts. So normally this is a hand that you would want to raise, but Jake has a stack that does not want to get limp jammed on. He might just jam, or he might just check. That works too. Um, He'll I peel think it off. Options are available. The thing you don't want to do on that stack size is raise a smaller amount because then when your opponent shoves, you can't call, and that hand is way too pretty to ever have to fold before the flop. Simon with the best of it checks over to Jake. So this is the beauty of tournament poker in general. In, in cash, you could just always raise with the 9-10 suited because if your opponent re-raises, cool, let's just call and take a flop. But in tournaments, you, you can't afford to call or raise anymore. Turn card. Changes a lot of things. Nine spades. Simon check. The 9 squarely hits Jake, and that improves his hand to easily the best. Simon checks to him. Jake's going to check right back. River and a jack, jack of spades on the river. Simon checks. Jake checks. Simon shows ace of diamonds, four of hearts. Jake shows ten of hearts, nine of hearts. And Jake's going to show the winning hand and add himself another 500 new chips to his stack. Nice hand by Jake. Yeah, a couple back to back there. Not huge pots, but over a million collectively. It was probably a slightly unfortunate river for jake because if it was something low i think he definitely would have went for value on the river with the nine and with the jack he just felt like he wasn't getting called by as many hands anymore like bottom pair ace high doesn't really need to call anymore so he decided to check it back that said it was a very fortunate turn for him he got the flop and then immediately got there on the turn Simon raising it up with his king 10 will scoop the pot right there. Over the 
Uh, we get half of it. You get half. I wonder if he had seven. Uh, he might have something like 72 as well. The reason why I'm so interested is because Wait, men's spin three raising man. a lot of fluff. So mm -hmm. if he had, like, let's say he showed, right? Then that means he's limp re raising with basically only bluff because he's raising initially with really good hands. So yeah. what's left now, it's a bunch of limps and probably some of them are limp re raises that aren't very strong. So you, you can learn a lot about opponents' range from how they play two hands, for instance. Now, now they may change how they, you know, play in the future. Maybe, you know, he changes how he plays the next half an hour, but uh, it just gives us a glimpse of how he's going about things right now. Men raising it up with 10-9. He's going up to 500K. Simon's already, Simon's already out, yeah. And Jake going all in. Yeah, this is going to work. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good hand to go all in with. Men folds. Jake's going to take down the pot. And Jake is going to pick up another pot with an all in move. Not necessary to push all in in that spot, but you think it's a good play given the circumstances? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, it's far and away the most standard play. The only reason why he would do something else is, let's say that uh, men was playing really crazy and was shoving over the top of small re-raises, then you might put in a small re-raise. But either way, the money's going in with Ace Queen. He only has 25 big blinds, so. Simon, King-10 offsuit, 200 to go on the button. He's gonna raise it up. Simon raises to 600. Jake in the small blind here, 500k more to go. Jake has a pretty weak hand. I think all the options are on the table for him right now. Um, this might be one of the few hands he wants to turn into a bluff because it's so Jake weak. Fold. He might fold it. Um, he might think it's... Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Jake was in the small blind. I don't know what Jake was all thinking about eat, there. Baby. That's another spot where I think Vince maybe. All in. And Simon says, I'll pass. Vin's going to win the pawn show. Pocket Kings, King of Diamonds, King of Spades. We are on a break. Yeah, so they're going to take a short break. And when we come back, only three oh, players baby, remain baby. in the start of season number 17 for the World Poker Tour from the Gardens Casino in Los Angeles. $565,000 up top. 366 going to seven. Over a quarter million, 270,000 going to the next person out. Who will it be? Potentially the dramatic conclusion. It's coming up next. Welcome to the brand new Gardens Casino. My name is Ron Sarabi. I'm the general manager and let's show you around. Welcome to the poker room floor. With over 100 cash game tables, 45 tournament tables, and 200 HD TVs, we are the best play in LA. Welcome to Club 999, where every weekend, the party comes to life. It really is the best play in LA. 1.6 million. Most likely getting a Jared call. Jared has here. ace king. 1.6. Question is, will they call or try to isolate? 1.6 million. Jared has Chooses isolate. Here, all in. <laughs> or try to isolate. We'll see what happens here as it comes around the corner. Jared has an ace of diamonds and a king of spades. 
Craig is the player at risk here. Two sevens versus Jared's ace king. About as classic of a coin flip as you're going to get. Queen eight five flop. That's clean for Craig as he stays in the lead. Turn is the three of club. Craig maintains his lead. Rivers the ten of clubs and Craig's going to double up. There you go. Little head nod from Craig. He's going to get himself off the short stack. Fairly sizable dent to a uh, Jared stack there as well. So quite an impactful hand. Papa Smurfs. Papa Smurfs, and then what did you call the the other Batman? The Batman. They remind me of like on, the old Donnie. school Batman with the, the gray and the black, you know, and like it was like pow, kapow, yeah. and showed up on the screen. Yeah, we should incorporate that into this live stream. Yeah. I, These I guys in the back can make that happen. <laughs> I think that would be great. I want to get a sound drop of you saying, "I am Batman." Come on. No, <laughs> not gonna do it. Jared here with two tens. He's gonna move all in on the short stack. Shoving for 1.4 million. Sire right behind him with two nines. Good hand, but. She's one upped in this case. Mm -hmm. Going into the hand, I think uh, Jared had about 16 big blinds. Sai had about 34, 35. This would be effectively half her stack if she calls. She chooses to go all in instead. Craig and Duke both fold. Everyone else folds. Sia looks a little disgusted that uh, her nines are beaten, but what are you going to do in this case? Jared is the one at risk. He's doing a little dance. He's feeling good right now with two tens over the two nines of Sia. We still got five cards to come. Tom Brady swagger. Eight, six, four. Jared stays in the lead. Looking at these graphics on screen, you see the percentage for Jared to win is at 90%. King of clubs on the turn. Jared maintains his lead with two tens. Sai is going to need a nine to knock him out. Rivers, the ace of clubs. Jared's going to double up. So a couple of double ups here in the few hands to come right out of the break. And we're off and running. It's like you would said, Donnie. Action. There was going to be one moment where... Queen, deuce, deuce, and Saya takes the lead. She checks. Men, the pre-flop aggressor. Let's see what he's going to do here. He checks. See what everyone else is doing. Here we go. 250,000 is the bet from Jake. In position on his two opponents, Saya and Men. Saya to act now. She has the best hand currently with two pair. Queens and deuces with an eight kicker. Saya also the shortest stack remaining, I believe. Jared might now be the short stack really? after that one confrontation that they have. They all that win. is true. That is true. We'll get a leaderboard update at some point. Saya check raises, makes it 750,000. Men gets out of the way. Action back over to Jake. Second time extension. The action clock not only in play here at the final table, but started one table outside the money, so it helps that transition of going into the money bubble. Ten 
Jake makes the call. Quite a big pot brewing here, more than 2.3 million in the middle. Turn cutter is the five of spades. Sai with just over 1.5 million behind. She announces that she's all in. So the ranking on the left shows where each player ranked at the start of the hand. You'll see that Jake has fewer chips than third place listed there, but that's because that's how many chips he has behind. So that's updated in real time as we're going through the hand. Extra 30 seconds for Jake here as he throws in a time extension chip. Making this call would cost him about 40% of his remaining stack. Another time extension chip for Jake. I'm really putting him to the decision here. Well, Sia's Sia's sizing after she check raised the flop is is really good. Mm -hmm. He's probably debating her if she just has over cards. And she check raised to a nice amount, 750 over the top of Jake's 250,000 flop bet, and then had a nice amount to shove into 2.3 with 1.5. So Jake knows it looks good, but that doesn't mean it is good. And that sizing, you're right, that's, that's what's confusing here. He's playing through the whole scenario from what started not only on this hand but there were similar situations late last night that the two of them were in where they used multiple time extension chips and I'm sure he's going through not only this hand but the last few days of how they've played against each other. Likely debating whether or not Saya has a queen. If she did have a queen why wouldn't she just let, let Jake barrel off as he was the aggressor on the flop. Jake ends up folding. Saya is going to take this one down. Very, very nice pot for her. Jake left with three point four King five King four, five one heart. Five Man's got the lead with a pair of fives. Bet two twenty-five, Men calls, two twenty-five. Bet from Sai as she continues her aggression. Men calls. Jack of hearts on the turn. Sia is still second best as men picks up a flush draw. Jack of hearts on the turn. Four hundred thousand. It's coming along for the ride. Yeah, four and a thousand there from Saya. Men sticks around. Eight of hearts, or sorry, eight of spades on the river. Saya can't win unless she gets men to fold. We'll see if she goes for the gusto here. Taking a bit more time here to figure out how she wants to play this final street. She checks. I don't see men firing a bet here, although I could be wrong. Uh -huh. I would be surprised. Looks like I'm going to be wrong. Yeah, me too. I'm I would think the only no thing that player. could call him would be something 
that would beat him. Yeah, but for men right now, you know, he's not necessarily thinking that he has the best hand. He does check behind. Yeah. He's going to take it down. But that's a spot where men might think, you know, I have to bluff to get her off a hand this as well. Is, this is true. So he does have the winner, though. He does check with showdown value. She looks a little bit confused there. Saya looks a little confused, but men did pick up a flush draw on the turn. Likely why he didn't go anywhere. If that heart doesn't come, it's going to be hard for men to call yes. a second barrel with with just his uh, yeah. Twitter back. And he's got a little bit more pull than I do, so. Uh, if you guys want to follow Tony Dunst, Vince Van Patten, mm -hmm. Lynn Gilmartin, you can check them all out on Twitter. Tony's handle is at Tony Dunst TV. Jared Griner here with two jacks. He's going all in. Vince Van Patten is uh, Vince Van P underscore WPT, if I remember correctly. And Lynn Gilmartin is just at Lynn Gilmartin. I'm Donnie Peters, at Donnie underscore Peters on Twitter. You can follow me, too. I tweet a lot about sports, not so much about poker these days. And if you want to follow Matt Savage or ask him a at poker Savage question, poker. He will, at Savage Poker, there is a 99.9% .9 chance he will respond to you on Twitter. I don't know how Before he does it. Before you finish your tweet. Yes, I don't know <laughs> how he does it, but Matt Savage... So Jared here is all in for 1.75 million. Craig wakes up with Ace King. He makes the call, or he reshoved to get Jake out of the, out of the pot from the big blind. We're gonna see a race here. Craig's Ace King off versus Jared's pocket jacks. Jared is the player at risk. He's 56% to win this hand. Ace of spades right on the flop, followed by the seven six of diamonds. Craig takes the lead here, and Jared's on the ropes. Turn card three of spades. Okay, so Jared's going to need a jack. And a jack only. Or he's going to be out in sixth place and taking home $115,000. There's another Ace race. Ace of diamonds on the river will do it. Craig Varnell knocks out Jared Greiner in sixth place. We are down to five in the WPT Gardens main event here at the Gardens Casino in Southern California. Jared Greiner from Utah. Chips to make sure. Uh, that we can get a read on, on both cards. <laughs> Sai here, Queen Jack of Hearts on the button. She announces that she's all in. Just more than one million. Men win here, picks up ace jack suited in the small blind. Can't see him not at least calling. All in for one million fifty thousand. Men also goes all in. Men shoves to isolate. He's gonna have Sai on the ropes here and dominated. Sai is going to be looking to double up. She's all in with Queen Jack of Hearts. Men's got Ace Jack of Clubs. Eight seven three flop, two clubs. Turn is the Deuce of Clubs, giving Men the Nut Flush, and he's going to take Saya out in fifth place. Saya Ono. She takes home $151,000 for her fifth place finish in this event. Career best score, nearly doubling the $187,000 she came into this tournament with in terms of her live tournament earnings. Local cash game. Captain Key. Captain Key, I like it. Anyone who comes in with a nickname like that is A-OK -okay in my book. How are you doing? Good, how about yourself? Doing very well, thank you. Down to four players here. Everyone's guaranteed more than $200,000, so. Seems like a pretty, uh, I mean, it's been a pretty fairly tight, hasn't been too crazy at the final table so far, but things have been picking up late as lines move up and shacks get a little, stacks get a little shallow. Yeah, it should be an uh, exciting uh, final table here. We have Simon here with Queen Jack of Hearts against Craig with Jack Deuce. Craig picks up a flush draw on the flop. Yeah, they both got something. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what um, happens on the blank turn, see if um, Simon continues to barrel. Bet from Simon, 300K. Craig makes the call. Turn is the four of clubs giving Craig a flush. 
Now, Simon, is he, he going to try to represent Simon the flush? No. Simon's been playing pretty snug, pretty straightforward uh, for most of the final table. Craig, bet. Craig does bet his flush here. I think Simon's just going to chuck fold. I can't see him um, doing anything else here. I mean, if he has queen jack with like queen of clubs, yeah, he can he can call or uh, check raise. But with queen jack of hearts, there's really not much he can do. He's thinking about it though. Throws in a time extension chip for an extra 30 seconds on the action clock. Simon with the commanding chip lead, he can um, make some aggressive moves, but this will be a bad time. Simon, Simon elects to check Craig raise. Craig quickly in. shoves. Yeah. And Simon drawing dead. Craig all in looks for four million. Simon's check. What's going on, man? 